singularity. Hi guys, uh, this is uh, Nick Danilo, aka Socrates, and I'm uh, here at uh, hacklab.go. Um, and uh, I have Eric Boyd with us today. Eric is uh, one of the co-founders of StumbleUpon and a very interesting guy altogether. And, and I thought he would make a very interesting subject for Singularity One on One. So, hi Eric and welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Uh, by the way, um, this is our first uh, on location show as it were. And I have to say a big, big thank you to that one anonymous, uh, very generous donor who provided funding for me to be able to purchase a video camera and some audio equipment uh, so that I'm actually able to go on location and uh, shoot interesting people and places like Eric Boyd, Boyd and uh, HackLab.io. So thank you, anonymous donor. I really appreciate your support. I, I envy his new camera equipment, I gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> it is really fantastic, but let's get, let's get back on topic here. So. Eric, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and uh, perhaps you should start with how and when you got interested in technology in general? I, I pretty much always been interested in technology. I remember the first computer I had as a kid was the Commodore 64. I was probably 10 and I learned how to program that thing almost immediately. Partly because on the Commodore 64 there really wasn't a lot of other things to do. You know, there were a few games you could play, but mostly it was about the programming. And I remember I would buy books and they would actually like list out all the lines of code and I would just type them all in. And eventually I made my own games and that kind of stuff. It was, it was lots of fun. That's fantastic. So how old were you when you got that computer? I, like I said, I was about 10, something like that. I, so I was super young. I remember in particular, I, I definitely had it by grade 6 because I remember I did, I did one of my like big projects for a class on the Commodore 64. So that six, I, grade 6, I would have been 11, right? And, and I was already an expert by that point, so I must have had it for a couple and of years. And then what happened then? Tell, lead us through the story. What happened then after that Commodore 64? Uh, well, I, I eventually upgraded to um, uh, 386. It was big time <laughs> at the time, man. I, I remember especially on the 386, there was, uh, there was a lot of games that ran so fast you had to install software that slowed your computer down. <laughs> oh, really? <Yeah. laughs> Those pieces of software were, were fun. Yeah, and and I didn't really do as much programming on, on the 386 as I did on the Commodore 64. There was some. I learned a, a language called Turing, which is, it's like a language, I think it was it's like sponsored by the government of Ontario anyway. It's designed for like people to learn. And and then eventually I decided I would major in engineering as opposed to computer science or mathematics, which were the other two things that I was considering. And, and I went to Queens and... I, I basically just like spent all my time working on classes. It was hard, hard program. <laughs> so you did engineering at Queen's University mm -hmm. in yeah. Kingston, Ontario. And tell us, how did you end up in Silicon Valley or uh, before that, how did you end up as one of the co-founders at the very beginning of StumbleUpon, which is today one of the top five, perhaps, if not at least top ten, but maybe even top five social bookmarking networks. Yeah, it's huge now. It wasn't huge when I worked at it. <laughs> uh, it it's a relatively long story. So when part of what I did when I went away to university is I got really interested in religion. And this, this story is going to really meander from here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, so I got really interested in religion. I joined this group called the Church of Virus, which was this like kind of like religion about using memetics, the, the science of idea propagation, to design a new superior religion. And through that I met David McFadzian, who hired me to work at Javian.com in Calgary. And Javian was the like classic dot com. We had money from like an oil tycoon, Russian oil tycoon, like billionaire guy. And we had this like ridiculous, unbelievably huge scope and like twenty employees. And no hope of like actually implementing the this the scope of the idea. It was a really cool idea. This like we had this like it was gonna we were gonna fund ourselves with micropayments by skimming skimming money off micropayments. It was gonna be like a financial infrastructure for the web. And associated with the micropayments was gonna be this identity scheme, and then the identity scheme required this like social forum stuff and there were all these interacting pieces and it was really cool, but it didn't work and, and when the dot com boom collapsed, we went down just like everybody else, right? But out of that, what happened is I met Jeff and Garrett, who are also working at uh, Javian. 
And we made quite a bit of money at JBN. And so when, when JBN went down, we were like, let's do our own thing. And we found uh, Justin as well. No, it was Justin who worked at, yeah, Justin who worked at JBN and Garrett who didn't. But anyway, the four of us started Stumble Upon after JBN went down. And one of the reasons that Stumble Upon was, it was so good right out of the gate is we had lots of time at JVN. We had about six months while we were working there that we knew JVN was going to go down and we were brainstorming ideas about what to do for like the whole six months. So by the time we had our opportunity, our freedom, we had this like long list of ideas and we chose the best one and we already knew exactly how to implement it and exactly all the steps to take. <laughs> Which is why like I think it was only three months and we had the first beta of Stumble Upon out and it's very much similar to exactly what you see today. There's like a toolbar with a button and you pick some categories and it recommends content on the web. Like yeah, <laughs> three months we delivered it. Like, <laughs> and what was your part specifically in that toolbar? What did you do? So, so I actually did the toolbar for Internet Explorer. That was my part. And um, Jeff did the toolbar for um, what at the time was called Mozilla, but eventually became Firefox. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Garrett did the backend server. He actually did the thing that would um, categorize all of the sites and maintain the database of ratings and do the recommendation. Mm -hmm. And Justin did all of the like business and accounting and patent and like all that like stuff that the rest of us couldn't tolerate at all. You'd need a guy like that in a startup, by the way. <laughs> we would be nowhere with it. So basically it was four of you guys starting StumbleUpon? It was four of us, yeah. <clears throat> That's awesome. And and uh, where was that? That was in Calgary. In Calgary. So so lead us to the story. I know that at some point you decided to part ways. So what mm -hmm. happened afterwards? So, so what happened afterwards, I worked there for about nine or ten months. And, and, and I was in the weakest position. I had the least money. Um, Garrett and uh, Justin were both living with their parents and Jeff had more money than I did so I was like the weak financial link I, I basically had to leave because I realized like it was it was the dot-com collapse that like if you approached anybody with a business plan that said dot-com on it <laughs> man you were laughed out of the room <laughs> yeah. yeah so there was no way we were gonna get money and and our user base was growing and our revenues were growing but they were not growing anywhere near fast enough that we were going to be able to pay the four of us salaries at any kind of rate in the next couple of years. And so I didn't have enough money to stick it out. And I considered like borrowing from my parents or whatever. I see. But the other thing that had happened is to join Javian, I left my degree at Queens. I had three of the four years done. I see. And I decided that if I was ever going to go back, I should go back now and finish my degree because it had already been three years. So that's what I did. I left StumbleUpon to go back and I finished my degree at Queens. So you actually completed your engineering Yeah, I completed my degree. That's why I got the iron ring now. So I completed my engineering <laughs> degree. And All that's right. how I got into Silicon Valley. Because once I had the engineering degree, then I was um, <clears throat> eligible for the TN visa, the NAFTA visa. And yeah. I, that's how I got into the States. A company there wanted to hire me, and they, I used my diploma to get the TN visa. So you worked at StumbleUpon in Calgary, you went back to Queens to finish your mm -hmm. engineering degree, and then you end up in Silicon Valley. So tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so I went, while I was working away at Queens, I like put my resume up on all kinds of crazy websites. And I, my resume was pretty good already. I had some decent work experience. It wasn't Absolutely. just, it wasn't just the dot coms, but I also worked at an, an like an industrial research thing. And, and I had some engineering experience even in high school. So yeah, I, I got this offer from a company in uh, Silicon Valley to join a high tech startup there. And I jumped at that chance because I've always wanted to live in Silicon Valley and, and, and like live that dream. So yeah, I, I jumped to that chance and I went and I moved to San Jose, California and, and I worked at a high-tech startup called um, Jetalon that does um, industrial sensors. Basically, we they made like <coughs> liquid flow sensors for customers like Intel and Applied Materials and AMD and Texas Instruments. And, and I got to fly to many of these customer sites and see like semiconductor fabs and really, really cool places. That's awesome. Yeah, That's awesome. That was awesome. And then you go to, I guess, San Francisco, mm -hmm. and uh... yeah. So the um, Jetalon moves from San Jose to uh, Walnut Creek or Pleasant Hill, I think. Uh -huh. And and I moved to San Francisco because it's a convenient ride on the public transit there. And I live in San Francisco, and I and I go part time at um, Jetalon so that I can work on my own things for a while, right? I, I do three days a week for the longest time. And I'm experimenting on the side, and that's when I find Noisebridge, the hackerspace in San Francisco. And, and I like, that place is just so incredible. I mean, if you think Hack Lab is incredible, you need to go see Noisebridge. 5,600 square feet of exactly this kind of like density. Oh so there's God. all, it, 
Like here we do like basically like hardware electronics and programming. Mm -hmm. At at Noisebridge, they have whole areas that are dedicated to like you know sewing. There's like a sewing corner, and there's uh, there's a science corner where they do like um, EEG stuff, and there's uh, there's like a whole wood shop and metal shop. There's a big kitchen where they actually do meals many nights a week. There's wow. a couple of awesome classroom areas. Yeah, it's like this place times ten, right? 